So when we talk about equity and the provision of equity at, in Fauquier County Public Schools, what are we talking about? What exactly it is, is it that we are referring to? So the definition that is sort of our guiding principle, and I won't read it to you, um, but the, the, we were asked several weeks ago by a school member, give me the definition. When you talk about equity, what are you talking about? Tell me, tell me specifically what it is you're talking about when you talk about the provision of equity. And really, the, and this is something that Major put together, it's really a distinction between equality and equity, <clears throat> and they're not the same thing. Okay, because the, 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 the mantra going back a generation was you just give everyone the same thing, treat them equally, and you know, hope things work out in the end. Well, that hasn't worked, and we still have groups of students who are falling behind, who aren't being successful for whatever reason, and the conclusion is we gotta give them something different. We have to provide them with equity, figure out what it is that they need to be successful and meet their individual needs. And it's hard to disagree with that. It's back to the uh, I hate puppies thing. I mean, it's hard to disagree with that. Okay, but believe it or not, there are people out there who do, do, do disagree with it. They just think, you give them all the same thing, and if they get it, great. If they don't get it, too bad. It's like the teacher that used to, you know, the teachers back in the day that used to say, I gave them everything I had, and if they didn't get it, that's their problem. Well, really, it's not their problem. It's your problem, <laughs> because you're supposed to be teaching them. Okay, so this is sort of the textbook definition and it really lays out a distinction between equity and equality and they're they are not the same thing the definition of equity that I personally like because it's very simple and I don't have to memorize much is this it's reducing the number of negative outcomes for kids period so what can we do for all kids and reduce the number of negative outcomes and what by negative outcomes I mean dropouts, spending time in ISS or OSS, suspended, um, failing courses, not graduating on time, getting involved with drug use, um, et cetera, et cetera. Those are negative outcomes, okay? We wanna reduce those. Pretty easy thing to agree with, I think, okay? But again, there, there are some folks that don't necessarily agree with this. So, um, but this is the way I, this is the lens I look through, and it's, for me, it's just easier to, if I'm on an elevator with someone, it's easier to say, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we're trying to, to accomplish. Uh, and it's not a program, okay? I get, I hear this over and over again. You probably have to, tell me about your new equity program. We don't have a new equity program. There is no, there is no program that we purchased from Pearson that, you know, we didn't, we didn't, that's not what it is we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to equip teachers and administrators with additional tools to reach kids who we haven't reached before. Okay? That, that's pretty clear, right? You're with me on this, right? As, as, as uh, Prashant says, you dig, right? <laughs> it's like, we haven't reached some of these kids. What are we going to do differently in order to reach them? You know, what, what, is, what is the strategy we're going to use? It's not a program. Programs traditionally fail. Practices stick. If you, if you change the way someone does their job and goes about their business, that's much more likely to be long lasting than, than I bought this program and we're gonna, we're gonna institute this new whatever program and hope it works out and oftentimes they don't. And you go on to the next, you buy the next program. We don't have an equity program. We're trying to change practice. That is our goal. <clears throat> um, the aspirations, and again, this goes back to the conversation. This was just a clarification for our school board. A the, the term equity, equity, equitable, et cetera, is all through our, uh, our strategic plan, Aspirations 2.0. It's all through that thing. Now, this is our guiding, this is our bell cow, right? This guides our practice in Fauquier County, Aspirations 2.0. We put it together, we spent a lot of time on it, okay, and the board voted on it, and it's, it's our baby. It's what we use to guide what we do day to day. Uh, I'm not sure why that looks so big, but that's okay. The, so the term equity, equitable, and equitably appears 22 times in the strategic plan. So again, it's not, an, it's not some new thing that we just decided sounded good. It's already in the strategic plan, which isn't exactly a new document. 
It includes language related to school nutrition, intervention, assessment, access to instructional services, and access to technology. That is the clear direction that we got from the school board two years ago. Um, we are, um, we, we, we kind of group these things in terms of different things that we provide in the, in the county in terms of digital equity. And we just, we asked folks, kind of surveyed people amongst senior staff and fourth floor and principals, et cetera. Um, how are we providing equity digitally? Digital equity, and here's what we came up with. Well, we provide Khajiit units for students who may not have Wi-Fi at home. They can check this, a Khajiit unit out of the library, have access to Wi-Fi in their homes. Uh, the PC giveaway program, which officially is known as the uh, PC giveaway program. Uh, we've given away over 100 PCs to families who don't have uh, computers. Um, it's computers that we have that are out of date. We can't use them in school, so we donate them. Uh, we increase bandwidth all the time. Uh, at high schools, it doesn't make, seems like it doesn't make a ton of difference because as soon as we add it, it gets eaten up. But we do continue to add bandwidth in our schools and that helps again with the, the whole equity piece. We still have people that come to our schools on weekends and park out in front to access um, our Wi-Fi. Uh, and then before and after access to, um, to Wi-Fi and internet, we provide that in our libraries, um, within our schools, et cetera, so people have access who wouldn't ordinarily have access to it. Um, as far as, uh, I'm not sure why it's looking like that, but what is the heading here? Is that can anyone see this? Instruction, okay. So in terms of how we provide equity through instruction, there's several different pieces. There's the Kaleidoscope program, which is something we instituted a couple years ago. I think Sandra Mitchell got this ball rolling with UVA to identify kids who wouldn't, had up till now, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, LaDonna, but kids who up till now would not have been ordinarily identified for gifted services. It's uh, kids who maybe their parents weren't pushing them or, or pushing the school to identify their kids as gifted and talented. It's, it's taking kids who have a skill set, but maybe it's not been recognized yet. Uh, so that's where the Kaleidoscope pro project uh, started and it's been very successful. Uh, American Sign Language program has been wildly popular with kids. The new homework res regulation that you're all familiar with, especially principals, that started as a conversation about equity. If you remember going back uh, you know, over a year ago, it was about providing equity and the homework practices within our schools aren't necessarily equitable. They give an advantage to one group of students over the others and those kids are, will have more negative outcomes as a result. Uh, consistency in elementary gifted services, we, we, we've standardized so that we're doing the same things from school to school in, in terms of identifying gifted uh, students and providing gifted services. A heavy equipment operation course, again, that's just another niche for kids um, who maybe the traditional wasn't working for them, they weren't gonna go to college, they weren't gonna go to military. We had a group of nine or 10 kids who went through the heavy equipment operating program at Lord Fairfax, and I think most of them ended up with good jobs, including a student at uh, Southeastern, I'm forgetting his name, two students from Southeastern. Uh, dyslexia training, you know, hats off to the folks who worked really hard to not only raise money for the training, but also uh, coordinate the training. And the last one, more, do, 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 more uh, Kim, um, more, more diverse, thank you, more diverse uh, selections, reading selections for students within schools. We not, didn't have necessarily the most diverse uh, books to provide uh, to kids who may be uh, in et certain ethnic groups, whatever. It provided a little more diverse reading opportunities for them. And um, I, again, I lost the top. Is this e economic? What is it? Economic. economic. The VPI program, you know, I'm very proud of the VPI program. It's expanded almost every year since um, we, its inception, I think five years ago. So we're doing more and more to provide services for our preschool age kids who wouldn't ordinarily, ordinarily go to preschool. Uh, end, of, end of lunch shaming, we no longer if a kid wants a meal, they get a meal, and we'll figure out the, the, uh, the, the uh, economic piece later. Fortunately, we've had some folks who have provided grant money, so we haven't had to worry about it. So we've been fortunate there, but no more lunch shaming. The PATH grant, you know, the PATH has just been a real blessing to the school division. They are all about what we're trying to do with equity. They support what we're trying to do with, the, with equity within our school division and they're putting up the money to show that they believe in it, <laughs> okay, with, you know, Bob the Bus, 
um, the, the equity uh, workshop we went to last year. I know I'm forgetting plenty, but they're just, they're just all on board with what we're trying to do with equity. Uh, professional development framework, um, we're doing more and more. I forget the numbers exactly of how many opportunities we've provided for uh, staff development that have an equity focus, but it's a lot. The Bland Graham Center is over there at Marshall. We just received a 100, 149. We just got a grant for $149,000 to expand the offerings at the Bland Graham Center, which is in Marshall. It's a lot of money. Hats off to Stacy Griffin. Stacy Griffin has now been with us for nine months, and she's brought in $215,000 um, in grant money in nine months. Okay, she's a go-getter. And she wouldn't mind me telling you this because she says it all the time. She makes $20,000 a year. Okay, and she's now borrowed in $215,000. And as she says, she's just getting started. So that's where that money came from to expand the Bland Graham Center. And again, I always like to thank Dave Graham. That was his baby, his dream. And that thing is going strong up at uh, in the Marshall Library, underneath the gym at the Marshall Library. And then, of course, books on the bus. Everyone loves books on the bus. Uh, we got to get a new bus. We get the last B, a new B for that. Uh, but Christy's working on that. So Kristen's getting Kristen. an honorary CTE certificate for working on that thing. Really? <laughs> Breaking down the transmission? She's always got her head under the hood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the social and emotional piece, the youth mental health first training, I think you're all familiar with that. I know it looks like most people in here have the, have the purple lanyard on. It's been very successful. You know, I had a parent ask me not long ago, yeah, but how many kids are you helping? I'm like, you know, I really don't know, but if it's one, then I think it's, it's worth it. <laughs> okay, but I, I can't give you the data on how many kids we've helped, but you know, I've heard stories, so if we're, we're getting a handful of them, it's been well worth the investment. Um, the increase in elementary counseling services, thanks to Governor Northam for putting that in the budget. We got a little bit of extra money to provide additional counselors. Uh, PBIS, VTSS, again, those are going strong within Falker County, stronger in some schools than in others, which is fine. But again, it's been a positive for many of our students. Uh, the one lunch program at, at Liberty High School, I was there the other day. I thought it was great. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so far, so good. Great. Knock on wood. Um, restorative practices, uh, that's a, again something that Frank's been working on for a long time in terms of disciplining students differently. And is it, did, did it cut off something at the bottom? Fish. Oh, the fish program. And, and I reluctantly put fish on there because fish is the program that we, we partner with an organization in the county that provides backpacks for, with food uh, to students on Fridays to take home for the weekend. We don't really do anything with that other than just give them space, but they've been good partners with us, and I think we've been good partners for them. You know, I know Linda uh, at Smith Elementary's work with them. I think, is it Coleman? Is that the other one? And maybe Mary Walter. So that they are, we are working with them to provide at least a space so that they can give these backpacks out. Uh, physical and emotional safety. The ESCO has been huge thus far, and it just gets back to that Maslow's hierarchy, right? At the bottom, physiological needs. If kids are hot and sweaty and can't hear, they're probably not gonna learn, right, Craig? So, um, and I've enjoyed walking through the cube and everyone thanked me for uh, bringing the AC in. I'm like, well, I didn't have <laughs> anything to do with it, but yeah, you're welcome. Uh, but <laughs> it had nothing to do with me, but just getting that air conditioning fixed, it's just, it's huge. And I'm ashamed that it took us this long to do it. Because if you're not familiar with this, the cube over here, it's a bunch of classrooms and the AC and heating is just awful and should have been replaced when they renovated this whole complex, but they didn't for whatever reason. And we're just now doing that. And it's just basic physiological. And if you're hot and uncomfortable and you can't hear because the units are so loud, you know, you're not going to be successful. It's going to be too difficult. If, we, if not for ESCO, we, we would not have been able to do that and many other things like at Taylor, at the Complete Reno, at uh, Mary Walter, and other places where we're constantly, through this ESCO project, upgrading. And that we would not have been able to do that without that ESCO program. And I think it is directly related to providing equity. Uh, the SSOs, um, it's been great. I think, Sal, I think it's been a great program. I think we're down one right now, SSO, I believe. 
division wide, but it's been a good program so far. And again, it's a basic physiological need. If you're not, you don't feel safe at school, you know, you're less likely to be successful. I think the kids see our SSOs as someone they can go to and talk to and share concerns, share something they heard, or just have a friend. And so far, so good with that program. Uh, the bus radios and cameras, all the new buses that we're ordering are equipped with uh, multiple cameras, the really long stop arms, which even with the 10 foot stop arm, we still had someone drive through one of those and knock it off uh, last spring. But um, again, it's a, it's a safety thing. Uh, but we're in a better place as far as people driving through the stop arms because the counties and the town has worked with us to prosecute those people who have done that. And we've been fortunate there. Let's see, uh, professional development. Okay, I mentioned this, I won't read it to you, but there's, as you know, a, a major focus relative to providing professional development training along the lines of equity. Uh, you know, 125 different equity-related PD events, over 6,000 hours of PD provided to our staff. So um, we are participating in activities that promote the equity message and uh, continue to give teachers and administrators the tools they need to provide equity. Uh, let's see, special education, uh, cut off the top there. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are, we've been pretty aggressive the last several years in terms of going to an inclusion model uh, throughout the school division. And, um, you know, some, some folks still don't like it. Uh, parents don't particularly like it in some, in some instances, not, not many, but in some cases they don't like it. But it's the right thing to do, and it's very good for kids. Uh, we, as demonstrated through achievement data, who um, are special needs and heretofore have not been successful when they're put into an inclusion model, inclusion classroom, suddenly they become successful. Not in every case, but, in, in, but much more than when they were in self-contained. Uh, inclusion in the PE Olympics, uh, transition program, which I love the transitions program. Um, and if you've not visited there, you should, especially you go over in the morning, it's in the Odd Fellows building on Main Street and talk to those kids, they're great, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and they have jobs and they make some money and they're, they're just fun. It's a really good program helping those kids transition out to the real world and get, uh, in some cases, get jobs. We hired an adaptive PE specialist. Again, PATH helped us fund that position. Uh, ordinarily, we probably wouldn't be able to pull it off, but we have a teacher uh, who, who provides adaptive PE services now for students in the county. Uh, human resources, uh, I, I can't say enough about the work our human resources department has done because I, I continue to hear horror stories uh, from different superintendents in the region who are still just battling mightily with the whole uh, teacher shortage issue. So I'm very proud of the fact that we're down, down to a handful of, uh, just a handful of vacancies in the county. And because um, I'm telling you, the teacher sh shortage issue is real. Uh, so yeah, all those things that our, uh, the good folks in HR do to bring teachers to our county, uh, we really appreciate that because it has made a big difference.